how did this happen? And I, I, I give you the answer, guys. You know, and this might shock some of you here. It's a little known fact, maybe a little known fact. It seems like it's a little known fact, but I'll share it with you, a little secret. I know that's why you came, secrets, right? <laughs> Is that drywall, insulation, baseboard, trim, stuff like that, cabinets, furniture, most of it, it's not waterproof. It does not withstand rain. Does anybody know that? I, mean, I know it's shocking, right? But it seems like the entire city of Panama City did not know that basic common sense fact. They didn't know that. They didn't know that if it rains, everything's gonna get wet. <laughs> okay, and what I'm getting at here is those roofs are ripped to shreds and they need to be covered up. They need to be protected, okay? Like if a tarp was put on the building, there would not be a pile of rubbish laying out on the curb. I don't, I'm just like, oh my gosh. Most of what I'm talking about today is basic common sense, right? In an industry where not a lot of basic common sense is applied. All right, guys, we're gonna get started back up here. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm gonna go through the uh, three phases of the industry, just to set a little bit more context here. And um, we're not gonna use this quite yet, but I just, something is annoying me. Okay, <laughs> we'll be using that here in a minute. But so the three phases of the, of the insurance restoration industry are what I consider to be, I mentioned it earlier, uh, mitigation, contents, and reconstruction. So a little bit about mitigation first, right? Mid and we saw a little mitigation yesterday, actually, didn't we? We saw a mitigation job uh, yesterday. That was a mitigation job, right? So a uh, pipe busting a wall, and that's what that was, basically. It was a brass fitting that was that busted or something and caused the water to leak in the wall, right? But if a pipe busts in a wall and water starts to leak, water gets all over the floor, right? Then a company like, well first, a plumber might be needed to shut off the water. That's a mitigation, right? And, um, and then a company like ServPro, you would think of a company like ServPro or Rainbow International or one of those companies that would come in and remove all the water, right? So you gotta clean up the water and cleaning and, and then they try to salvage what's there, right? And so like they try not to, remove carpet if they don't have to, for example. Uh, the padding is a little bit more difficult to salvage, but the reason is because look at this carpet in here, in this room, right? Like, I don't know for sure, but just a little eyeball. I'm not a very good eyeballer. You would think I would be after 20 years. I'm not, I have to, I have to let the, you know, I have to put it through the system, but I'd say this carpet pad and carpet remove and replace, it's probably a good $15,000 or more for this room right here. I mean, it's, it's probably pretty pricey, right? And so, you know, if it costs two or $3,000 to try to save it, that would be worth it for the insurance company. You see what I mean? Like, that, that is, Sir Pro is supposed to, you know, the mitigation companies are supposed to try to salvage it before they remove it. But I've been involved in plenty of projects, you know, just as a reconstruction contractor where I came in to, to do the put back, the build back, if you will, when I come in and, the carpet's gone, everything's dry, clean, you know, and the pads have been removed, the subfloor or the concrete beneath is clean, clean and dry. The baseboard's been removed. Sometimes there'll be a, what's called a flood cut where they come and remove the bottom of the drywall so many inches up um, where it's been wet. Um, maybe insulation's been removed, right? And that, so the, so the mitigation has been complete, you know, so like, and they may have set up fans and dehumidifiers and you, know, you think of items like that, that's mitigation. But also fire, you know, the, you think of, uh, let's talk about, you know, small kitchen fire, for example. A kitchen fire is actually a pretty big deal. Even if it's just a tiny little fire, it causes smoke to go throughout the building. Now the whole building has to be dealt with, you know. So if we're talking about a three bedroom house, for example, and there was a kitchen fire, and it was smoke that traveled throughout the house, then that smoke leaves behind a toxic soot that needs to be removed. And so literally like everything in the house has to be dealt with. We have to now clean the baseboard, prime the baseboard, paint the baseboard. You know, we have to detach the light fixture, clean the light fixture, reset the light fixture. You know, we have to do this all the way throughout the, the door, detach the door, 
detached door hardware, clean door, clean door hardware, reset door hardware, reset door, prime paint door. You know what I mean? Um, we may have to uh, prime uh, the attic framing with an odor control shellac, you know, to uh, get rid of some of this odor, you know, the smell. And that's one of the biggest things about fires too, by the way. I was reading this thing the other day, they're doing this study about, this is newer technology happening uh, in studies and they're finding that there's like emotional distress and depression and all kinds of other things, feelings basically, that are caused by the odor. <laughs> and so that's a new thing that's being considered in these insurance claims, you know, that the odor actually triggers like psychological issues, you know. I'm not too far into that, believe me, but I'm just saying it's bad, right? It has to be dealt with. Yeah, I mean, so you have to um, clean the windowsill, prime the windowsill, paint the windowsill, right? Clean the window, clean, you know. So the whole house, you get the idea, right? Um, so that, that's mitigation. You think of also, um, well, by the way, before I move forward, you know, with that kitchen fire, you know, also there's, there's we're gonna talk about a little bit about contents in a second, but, but remember that kitchen fire, because, you know, the, there are contents in Xactimate, for example, like clean flat screen television. Clean flat screen television inside and out. <laughs> like, it's an Xactimate already, you know what I mean? But we'll come back to that in a second. Um, but other mitigation, think of uh, environmental services, asbestos removal, lead removal, right? Um, tree versus house, tree versus building, car versus building. You know, you, you need to board it up, right? Um, wildlife <coughs> pest control. If you guys are doing a roof, and there's raccoons in the attic or bats or something like that. Like if they live there, is it lunch yet? No, no, we got, we got a little bit of time. I don't want to upset any stomachs here. But like if these critters live up there, then they defecate and urinate up there. And that's extremely toxic. And anything that touched has to be remediated and removed and replaced. Um, so, and then also I want to, oh, I do want to say though, mold, right? Mold is con technically mitigation. But I want to encourage you not to use the word mold ever, okay? Like for any reason. Like usually the word mold introduces our environment when the client's like, oh gosh, I've got mold, I've got mold, right? And everybody has mold. We're all a little moldy. <laughs> no, but I mean, there's levels of mold in every building, you know, just how bad is it and how much is it, how hot is it, all those things, right? But. The thing about it is, is that mold under usually, most circumstances, it falls within a place of the policy where there are extreme limitations and exclusions and caps, right? Um, they're real concerned about mold, all right? And so I know this as when I was doing the virtual estimating, I, have, I had a couple mold remediation clients and they would bring me jobs and every now and then they'd be like, Chad, you gotta take it easy on this one. The guy's only got a $5,000 cap. You know, I know you wanna write it up for 25, but you gotta keep it, I'm like, dude, I've let the chips fall where they may and they cap it out, you know, but that, that's, that's where I really learned a lot about mold is that there are all these uh, limitations, right? But in my world, it's not mold, okay? It's not mold, like, and let me explain. I was in Hurricane Ike and I was down uh, looking at a house. We were inside of a house, I was with an adjuster and Inside this house on Galveston Island, previously the seawater had filled up the whole, been up to the ceiling in, inside of this house from the storm surge. And so we're sitting there now looking at it. Everything was, had, you know, the water had receded. But we're looking down, at, like near the baseboard on the floor, and we're looking at what looks like shrubbery, like coral reef. It was mold so bad, right? Like it was a lot of mold. And we had masks on, and I'm saying that, I look over at the adjuster, I'm like, Jeez, would you look at the extent of that water damage? And he kind of laughed and said, yeah, yeah, that's a lot of water damage, you know what I mean? And because he knows, he doesn't want it to get kicked out of his hands or be limit, limited, um, and I just gave him the key. You know, we're not gonna say mold, it's freaking water damage, right? It's water damage. Any mold that you see, spots on in the house, all that mold you see, that's not mold. It, for all intents and purposes, mold. But in your world, it's water damage, okay? Because water damage does not have those same limitations, right? And caps and exclusions. There are some problems with water damage in certain instances, but not nearly like it is with mold, right? So it's not mold. The other thing, it's not rot, okay? Like on the decking, you're trying to replace the roof, 
and, and you're trying to get the insurance company to, to pay for this rotted decking that you had to replace because you had to do it, right? Um, that's not rotted decking, guys. That's a non-nailable sheathing, right? That is a water-saturated underlayment. That is water-soaked decking. Those are three, three separate building codes that requires you to replace that deck that has nothing to do with rot, okay? Period. Like, because you have to comply with the law. And that, my friends, is ordinance and law. <laughs> and if they have ordinance and law coverage, OL coverage, i.e. building code upgrade coverage, right? Then they have to pay you for that. But you don't say the decking is rotted, right? You say the decking is a non-nail, it's non-nailable sheathing. It's water-saturated underlayment. It's water-soaked decking, right? That's what you say. So. And, I, and listen, say whatever you want, but I, like I said, I was going to share what I say. That's what I say. <laughs> How about that, right? Um, so, but back to mitigation, you've got uh, you know, a number of things, emergency services. Like, look, board up and anybody here ever install tarps for roofing? Install tarps, right? Tarps. You guys are all in the mitigation business. You got any menus available, guys? Um, it's all, di select dine-in on there. Put dine-in if you haven't. I don't know why we got to do that, but for some reason we got to put dine in. They apparently know we're dining in. <laughs> it's definitely not to go. It's all dine in. It's all dine in. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, you're stuck with us for lunch. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just one question. Oh, I got everything. Okay, is it gonna be one ticket or separate? One ticket. One ticket. It's on our. Uh, they have all of our payment information. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Oh, it's on the master. Should be a master. Master, Master BEO or something up there that they have. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. So you guys are all in the mitigation business. Anybody doing tarps? That's mitigation. All right. And I want to break away now and talk about this for a second. When I was um, dealing with Hurricane Michael, I guess it's been a year and a half ago or so, I was in Panama City. That, by the way, was one of the most devastating hurricanes that I've looked at. Michael. That was a big one. I mean, like, didn't, didn't hear about that as much, but 155 mile an hour wind. I mean, when I'm looking at the damage to the buildings, that was the one I think was more damaging than most I've ever seen. It was extensive. Um, lots of wind damage. Now, and you think about, like, if you saw it on the news, in Mexico Beach is where it made landfall, like buildings actually wiped off the foundation, you know. I'm not so much talking about that, but when I went down to visit, I had assignments down there. I didn't go for like two and a half weeks after the storm, because it's like, you know, bef before with Harvey being in the, in the mess, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting too old for this. I'm gonna wait for the dust to settle and for everything to get back online, then I'll go down. Um, about two and a half weeks after the storm, and I did what a lot of you probably would do, is I went and surveyed the area to check out the damage, right? And I'm driving around, and out in front of every home, every business, just about all of them, guys, I'm seeing out in front of them a pile of rubble right just total rubble like we got furniture and cabinets and carpet and tile and hardwood and you know drywall and insulation and all this stuff just laying in piles everywhere right and i'm like and they put it out by the curb for the because the city had a city pickup and came by like every so often and took it away for free right but i thought man these play a lot of these places are gutted you know and why is that because you know, look i'll tell you I, I studied the storm a little bit. It came in. It didn't have much rain with it. So like when it hit, it cleared up, you know, right away. It hit and it moved on and then it became clear skies, right? And so like the amount of water damage that was there to cause all that, that damage, it really couldn't have happened right after that storm. Wasn't enough rain to cause all that. Like the roofs are intact. They're on. There's missing shingles and things, right? They're destroyed roofs. But, but they look like, you know, they're not like ripped off the house, right? Um, so you're wondering, I'm wondering like, how did this happen? How did this happen? And, you know, it didn't rain for a good two weeks after the storm, right? A week or so, it was a good little while, right? How did this happen? And I, I, I'll give you the answer, guys, you know, and this might shock some of you here. It's a little known fact, maybe a little known fact. It seems like it's a little known fact, but I'll share it with you, a little secret. I know that's why you came, secrets, right? <laughs> Is that drywall, insulation, baseboard, trim, stuff like that, cabinets, furniture, most of it, 
it's not waterproof. It does not withstand rain. Does anybody know that? I, mean, I know it's shocking, right? But it seems like the entire city of Panama City did not know that basic common sense fact. They didn't know that. They didn't know that if it rains, everything's going to get wet. <laughs> okay? And what I'm getting at here is those roofs are ripped to shreds. And they need to be covered up. They need to be protected. Okay? Like if a tarp was put on the building, there would not be a pile of rubbish laying out on the curb. I don't, and it's like, oh my gosh, most of what I'm talking about today is basic common sense, right? In an industry where not a lot of basic common sense is applied, you know? But like, listen, so I did, I did see though, I did see some patches to the roofs, you know, like I'd see these little four by four patches of tarps, eight by eight, six by six, 14 by 14, whatever, 12 by 12. And some people were using like synthetic felt to go up and, and I, and I think they're just patching up like they're, they're tarping where they're seeing the missing shingles, like the little black squares or rectangles, right? And the tile and metal roofs and other things, right? But, and, and some of them using synthetic felt, some of them are putting their names, like their logos on the uh, synthetic felt, you know, brazen enough to put their name on their incompetence, okay? Mm -hmm. I say incompetence because what is the point of doing any patching of any of that stuff unless you're gonna tarp it 100%? Like if you're doing roofing, you need to understand that if there's 155 mile an hour wind that hits a roof, it's not just the areas where the shingles are missing where there's damage. All those shingles are damaged. Those roofs, everywhere I drove, all the, I don't care what kind of roof they were, they were destroyed. You know what I mean? No matter what they look like, they're destroyed. And the evidence is all the piles of rubble sitting out in the curb on every one of these buildings, right? And so it's just, I, I, you see me, I get a little animated. I really am upset about this issue, man, because I've been through all these different hurricanes. You know, like the 04 hurricanes, they, there was an Operation Blue Roof, like FEMA had a program where everybody got a blue roof, right? And, and so my introduction into the hurricane world, if you will, was everywhere I looked, there was a blue roof. Everybody had a blue roof. When I say blue roof, I mean it was covered 100%. The whole thing was covered up not little patches, the whole thing was covered up. So I had that luxury of going into every hurricane thereafter of knowing that simple fact. Like it seemed foreign to me after a hurricane if your roof was not covered up 100%. So if you were my client, that'd be the first thing I'd do is cover it up 100% with a tarp to protect it from further damage. Because that is the obligation of the client to stop further damage. Now, on the news after hurricanes, every single one of them, they're always like, be careful of the contractors, they could rip you off, right? What they should be saying on the news after get water and ice to save your life is put a tarp on your roof 100%. You know what I mean? That should be the public service announcement everywhere. But nobody even knows. But what's sad to me is that the contractors don't know. That's really sad to me. That's why I say brazen enough to put their name on their incompetence. If they had that job and they're out there, you know, how much, they, how much money are they going to make to go out there and put those patches up on the roof? Well, Xactimate charges by the square foot for tarping. It's in the TMP category. It's by the square foot. There's during business hours and after business hours, by the square foot. And there's an emergency services call, like charge, what's that, 150, 186 bucks, something like that, right? Um, during, after, and during business hours, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., right? So if it's after that, before that, it's after business hours. So you'd use that code, but it's remove and replace. So if you're, I mean, if you're just doing a little tarp, little patch, what are you getting paid for that? A couple hundred bucks to go out there and do that, if that? I mean, so one of the files you'll get today is one of my tarp estimates. And it's like 26 squares and it's over 10 grand. Just to let you know, I didn't make up that price, that's exact to me. You know, because if you don't, when done properly, like they did back in the FEMA Operation Blue Roof days, like it's done, you know, it, it, that the remove and replace, re, remove and replace price per square foot includes the battens, like the furring strips that are put on the outside of it. Um, but to do it properly, you should also maybe put one buys down around the perimeter and tuck the tarp over top of that so water can flow off properly. So there's a price per linear foot for that. Remove and replace that. And I say remove and replace because I'm probably going to be the guy to do the roof. You know what I mean? So I got to take it off, you know, to put the roof on. But we all know about steep charges. Remove and replace steep charge, high charge, remove and replace high charge, additional roofing hours or, or maybe temporary labor hours. 
to cover up all the openings and mask and, and tape all the openings that are from the vents and pipe jacks and things like that, right? Um, so special access charges and things, but you can see from that that estimate that you guys will have access to um, ten grand for a twenty-six square, you know, and how much money we're going to make off of that profit-wise? Quite a bit, right? But more importantly than any of that, how much money are we going to save the insurance and the headache and heartache by protecting the rest of the client's property? Remember, the client has the obligation of stopping the bleeding. They have the obligation to do that. It doesn't say in there, well, you know, if they're not around, they don't have to stop the bleeding, or if they can't afford it, or if they don't know how to climb up on the roof and do a tarp. It doesn't say any of that. They have the obligation to stop the bleeding. So like that pile of rubbish, is the insurance company going to pay for hundreds of grand's worth of a gutted out house because they didn't tarp it up? The sad reality is they probably are. They don't have to. They shouldn't, you know, under the contract. They're, they're going to take the hit and they're going to pay for that. You know, we talk about how the insurance companies are ripping us off. Think of that. Think of the big hit they take on the front end, you know, from all those morons. You know, I'm sorry, but that, that's really, you know, it's a basic sense, common sense. Why don't we cover up the, you know, the roofs? But I, I went on from the, the Central Florida hurricanes, and then I go on to uh, Wilma down in South Florida from, the, from there, and, no, and they stopped that program. And nobody had tarps on the roofs, and they weren't available anywhere. And I was like, you got to get tarps on your roof. I'm telling everybody, you know, and sure enough, two weeks later, it rained. Miami Herald, front page ceilings caving in all over South Florida. You know, the first time it rained, ceilings caving in everywhere. It's just common sense. Water, when it comes, it's gonna run down gravity. It's gonna get all over everything, right? Well, the same thing everywhere I've been, the hurricanes, every one of them after that, the, every one of them, it seems like nobody knows what they're doing as far as these, har these tarps. Every one of them, I got, you can go to my YouTube channel, I got from Harvey, I'm on top of a Holiday Inn out in Corpus Christi, screaming, literally screaming from the rooftop, this big giant hotel, I'm up at the top of it, and I'm like, you gotta cover up these roofs, you know, it's gonna rain, because it was real clear after that, the rain went over to Houston. Um, so anyway, enough on that. Any questions on that? By, well, I, well, before I ask this, I'll just say a lot of questions that I get, I'll try to cover those, is, uh, okay, but, man, what about you're going you're gonna to cause further damage to the roof, you know? Well, you know, if it's already been approved for replacement, you don't have to worry about that, right? But if it's not been approved, then by all means, and I've seen it, you know, back again, back in Orlando, sometimes they would put OSB board down, you know, and not penetrate the roof, just install the tarp over the OSB board. That's the way they did it, like if it wasn't approved. You could do that, but I would say, just get the permission. I have a client on uh, those churches I mentioned that we're doing. Um, he contacted the insurance company, sent him some photos, and got the permission to tarp the roof. He didn't send him an estimate for the tarp, okay? But he got the permission to tarp the roof. So you could do that. You know, he got he contacted the inside desk adjuster and got their their permission directly. Or can you wait for the adjuster? What's the weather look like? You know what I mean? Can you wait for the adjuster and just get the permission from the adjuster? I intend to tarp this roof 100%. You got a problem with that, right? So, you know, more importantly than any of the money that you would make on that, guys, is that you would do the right thing by your client. That should be the first thing we're thinking of, right? Um, I had a client in Plano, Texas, upscale neighborhood, elderly client, hail damage. And it was uh, significant hail damage. There was already leaks on the inside. And, and that's another indicator. If it's leaking on the inside, we gotta get tarps up there. I'm not saying you need to tarp it 100% if it's just a little flashing leak, or if one side of the house got hit by hail, or if a tree fell on one side of the house. But just about anything else, if it's damaged, if the roof is damaged, we gotta cover it up. Unless you intend to roof it right now, <laughs> all right? We gotta get that roof covered up. And so I, I was telling that client that there's nobody in their neighborhood in Plano who had tarps on the roof. And so I was telling them, well, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to get a tarp on your roof. And they're thinking to themselves, okay, I'm going to be the only, neighbor, the only house in the neighborhood with a big blue roof. And, they're like, and they weren't in Orlando like I was. And that, that sounds crazy to them. They're like, oh, my gosh, what's our neighbors going to think of us? You know what I mean? That's what's going through their heads. And like, well, Chad, can, can you not tarp the whole thing? Can you just maybe, like, tarp the bad parts, you know, first? And I'm like... Yeah, sure, you know, it's golf ball size hail that hit the whole roof as far as I could tell. Which areas would you like me to start with? <laughs> you know, which golf ball size spots would you like me to tarp, you know, and leave the other golf? You know what I mean? It just doesn't even seem logical. Um, so, anyway, that's it. But any questions on that? I, I got stuck. One with of the a, problems is if you just tarp in a small area and another heavy wind and heavy rain comes, what keeps 
with that. Well, not only that tarp in place, but what keeps that wind-driven rain from getting underneath that tarp mm. area? So when you tarp the whole roof, great point. You protect the whole thing. The whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, sometimes you only have it on one slope. So yeah, you'll take it over the peak, but you're still going to have that wind and rain. Sure. Get up underneath that tarp and get back to that bad area. Sure. So ah, good point. Good when point. I, when it just so why do you have to tarp the whole thing? Well, how do I stop? for the wind and rain from getting up underneath. Great point. I, lo I yeah, like that I can, logic a lot. I can nail around the perimeter, but or I can put a nail board and then nail the thing, but see this shingle, it's not flat. Mm -hmm. Or tile roof. Tile roof, I, I tarp immediately. Nightmares, right? But yeah. The shingle, it's stair step. So what's going to you know, That's right. You stick some foam? <laughs> That's right. What am I, yeah, I can do that too, you know, so, but... If you yeah. get the approval to tarp the whole roof, mm -hmm. like on a shingle roof, that kind of sews it up for replacing the whole roof thing, doesn't it? It kind of does, doesn't it, brother? <laughs> the, uh, take lots of photos. That's the other thing. You know, take hundreds of photos. If the adjuster comes out and they question it, you know, you want to have documentation as to the way it looked before. Um, and I have had them say, well, you're going to have to remove the tarp for me to inspect it. Okay, but you do know I'm going to have to charge for that, right? You know what I mean? Like, that is legitimate, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, like, for sure, you know, make sure to do that, too. Any other questions? I had one group in, I think it was uh, Baltimore. It was Baltimore. Well, they had me stuck for an hour and a half on tarps. Man, they're so blown away by that, you know, like they're like a question after question, like, oh, so can I do this? And I do this. So I always ask questions, but don't, don't bog me down on tarps, man. You know what I mean? Like, let's keep it rolling. Um, but I will say, if you rolled up on a, on a Belfour job, and Belfour being, you know, the world's leading insurance restoration company, or SurfPro, independently owned franchises, if you roll up on one of their jobs after a hurricane, their roofs are going to be tarped 100%. You know, they will be. Shrink wrap is a, is a thing that they do on commercial buildings. It's quite, quite perplexing. Go, go look on, on YouTube and check out some shrink wrap jobs being done and check that out. That's crazy, guys. You got to go check that out. That's another mitigation uh, deal. Yeah. Does Surf Pro do roofs as well? Uh, some of them do. Yeah, they're we independently have a owned. Pro next door to I noticed. And I noticed. So I'm thinking if we can partner with them. Uh, that's what, that's why I don't know if you were there last night. I, I was like, you guys, you guys better get all over Surpro. You need to be inviting them to your mixers and yeah, the whole, absolutely. the whole nine uh, yards, right? Actually, some of them because I've, I've dealt with Surpro and Black and Morning so yeah, Much like I was saying, Exact and Hague and all you know, them. They started out to help us the contractors and then right. as volume started coming from the insurance company they figure they keep it all in house they keep the oh yeah be more happy than they're going to keep the contractor in the homeowner so uh, I, you saying, guys, they're going to do minimal it's so they're told to do minimal yeah it's so strange how throughout the years of doing training and different things and youtube and there i never ever ever see serve pro at any of my events, at any, they have their own internal training, you know, like they don't buy into my stuff, you know, like they, like my, my way of thinking, you know, I did have a guy come um, to Philadelphia and he actually has, like he owns part of Manhattan territories, like he has like three different uh, areas there, he's a big timer. And I got to learn so much, finally, about why all that is. How come I never see you guys? You know, they're so, like, really, really, really brainwashed. Like, they really, they're big time in the carrier's pockets, man. Like, they will do whatever they want. But they do have, I think they, I would submit to you that they've got a little bit of power themselves that they should use. You know what I mean? Uh, but they don't tend to do that. Um, now, let me, let me move on. Mitigation, right? Now, let's talk about some contents, all right? Where they would, re where they would relate to us. And I'm telling you, they do relate to us. And this is where I miss the boat as a contractor, okay? Look, at any time I had a significant water damage job or fire or hurricane damage, you know, lots of da interior damage from a roof job, tree hit a building, whatever, significant job, especially where the client had to go stay in a hotel, like when we were, when we were doing the job, which the insurance company pays for, that's additional living expense, ALE. They have a budget per day for the hotel, right? Um, 
they would say to me, they would say, Chad, okay, so what should we do with all of our personal stuff, right? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, you don't want our guys going through all your personal stuff, right? So you pack it up, okay, box it up, and we'll move it out of the way for you. Like, so can somebody please punch me <laughs> for me saying that all those times? Let me explain, okay? Like, I made such a mistake saying that all those times. And really, it was a major disservice to my clients, too, right? So I go throughout all these years of doing these jobs. That's what I'm saying. And then later on, when I'm doing virtual estimating, and people are sending me their stuff, and I'm writing estimates for them, I had this one guy. He was in Rockwall, Texas, and he needed an estimate done for... Uh, con he, need, he was a fire damage kitchen fire type job and he did an estimate put together for contents packing and storing like so all the con all the personal belongings had to be packed up moved to a storage and then packed back like brought back after the job was done right um, but the, all the contents also needed to be cleaned because of the kitchen fire so like clothing and upholstery and curtains and all these things all that had to be cleaned and brought back right so he needed an estimate for packing and estimate for contents cleaning. And I told him, full disclosure, I've never done this before, dude. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this, right? Um, but I've seen that I have all this stuff in Xactimate. I've looked at it before, but I'm, I, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I've done use Xactimate for years, but I've never done the contents. And he said, no, it should be easy. I've got real detailed inventory, you know, checklists. I've got everything, got pictures of everything. You should be able to find, as long as you can find these items in Xactimate, you should be good. I said, well, as long as you know, I'm willing to give it a try, you know what I mean? Like, but as long as you know what you're doing. He's like, yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. So I, I, it was a farmer's estimate, three bedroom house. Not a big house, normal, regular sized house. This lady had a lot of stuff. Not a hoarder, but she had a lot of things. And all the uh, dry cleaning had to be done, like with ozone treatment, like all the clothing and stuff, uh, and all the contents moved out. So I get in there and I'd start hunting and pecking through you know, most of everything on his list was in Xactimate. I mean, there's like woman's fancy blouse, child's bib, crib liner, you know, lazy boy chair. I remember on the list was a, a lighted Budweiser sign. Of course, I couldn't find that, but I found lighted sign. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a lot you can see in there. Alarm clock, you know. I mentioned earlier, alarm clock. Clean outside of alarm clock. Clean inside and out. Blender, you know. Everything's in there. It's crazy, right? I couldn't believe how much stuff I found in there. So I put together these two different estimates. The pack out was like 20 something thousand, like 20 or 21,000. Same thing for the uh, cleaning, the contents cleaning, 20, 21. I just remember all together it being 43,000, right? For both estimates. Yeah, for a small, I mean, it's got to be probably more than the construction that was involved, right? And, so, and that's what I'm thinking. I'm just same thing you, the reaction. I'm like, uh oh, I got a problem here. First, Farmers is never gonna approve this. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, yeah, and second, this guy's never gonna pay me. You know what I mean? Like, because I'm charging based on the amount of the estimate, he's never gonna pay me this. So I tell him what the amount is, and he's like, ah, that sounds about right. Send me over the bill, I'll get you paid. I send him the bill, and he pays me. He sends it in that day to Farmers, and on that day, they approved every single penny. And of course, I'm like, what I miss? <laughs> you know what I mean? What I miss? What I leave on the table? But, but you know what? <clears throat> that blew me away because I'm like, holy moly! There's a whole other area of this industry that I've been that's been right underneath me that I didn't know about, and I was really excited about that because I'm like, oh my gosh, I can now make a lot more money in this business, right? But immediately, I was devastated by all the money I lost through the years, man. Think about that. Think about all those jobs where I should have been doing that, right? But, and, then, and then just felt so guilty because once I moved past the money that I lost in my mind, I'm thinking about, look what I made my clients do. I made them pack all that up themselves and they didn't even get paid for it. Dude, what a terrible contractor I was. Not to mention I didn't know anything about building codes. You know what I mean? Like, we'll get into that. But you see what I mean? Like, so, yeah, go for it. So to ask the obvious question, anytime you have water damage in a seat, <laughs> you're going to have to paint the entire rooms, all that stuff, pack, reset, everything out of the house is essentially... It could be. I mean, you know, if it's, if, if it's for minor projects, I'll tend to use, just to be reasonable, the move out, then reset, small room, larger. I, I will use that um, just to be reasonable. But if it's an extensive amount of repairs, I'm going to do a full-on contents estimate. 
like if we if there's more than one room more than a couple rooms in that house we have to deal with and there's a lot of contents i'm going to do a full-on contents pack out estimate how i would do it is i would first like i'm assuming there's a lot of mitigation involved now look the mitigation when we think about uh and this is the other area i was getting ready to go to is perfect segue for that mitigation all right when you think of water damage on drywall like that we were talking about that water spot earlier if the adjuster does have that written up, or maybe even on a fire damage, like the whole room's gotta be gutted, the adjuster's usually gonna put on there R&R drywall, R&R insulation, right? That's wrong. Because if you go into the WTR category, which is the water remediation category, it shows you tear out wet drywall bag for disposal. And by the way, there's category one, you know, category three, right? I'm mean, going to tear out wet insulation, bag for disposal. Tear out wet baseboard, bag for disposal. Wet trim, tear out wet door, tear out wet cabinets, tear out wet carpet, bag for disposal. I mean, I think you already know which one's going to be more expensive. <laughs> the removed drywall or tear out wet drywall, bag for disposal? Just go check out how much of a difference it really is. And then the fire categories, HMR, hazardous materials, a lot of the same stuff is in there, but you also have, you know, both of those categories, you have fans, dehumidifiers, desiccants, and ozone treatment, all of that, right? So that's what mitigation is. And they have labor per hour, supervision labor per hour, how many technicians, how many hours, right? There's a whole, so like, honestly, if that one water spot on a roof leak deal, I'm gonna write it up like I told you I would. Remove the drywall, replace the drywall. I'm not gonna tear out wet drywall bag for disposal, but I could. Remember I told you before, that's probably category three. So like the adjuster wants to beat me up and go sideways about my estimate, say it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. You know what, it is wrong now that I'm looking at it. Now that you've brought my attention to it, I'm looking at it and I'm scrutinizing it myself and I'm realizing, you know what, this is freaking category three water damage. It is wrong. I need to go back and start at the beginning and start all over again. Tear out, wet everything, back for disposal. You know what I mean? Like, so we could, I want to be reasonable at all times, but I also want to leave something in my back pocket. You know what I mean? But that's, that's mitigation, you know? And, and when the packing, the, con the packing is, just one second, the packing is small box, large, medium box, large box, XL box, right? Fragile, bubble wrap, right? There's truck, moving van, uh, small, large, you know, like there's different sizes of the van um, per day. How many days do I need it, right? And then there's climate controlled storage, okay? So like I was dealing with one of these the other day, Oklahoma City in the middle of summer, the insurance company wanted them to move out, then reset was the item they were using and put it into a pod, right? Job site storage container, you guys have all seen that. Forget about that. They pay for climate controlled storage. I'm not putting my stuff into a hot metal box in the middle of the summer in the middle of the driveway. I won't take it down to climate controlled storage. You know what I mean? I mean, I, that's what I'd be saying because I know that the insurance company pays for that just the same. So I'm like, why would I put it in a pod? I'm taking it and doing the proper thing to it, right? Um, so then you have moving technicians per, per hour, per, and you have uh, during, after business hours. Um, so that, that I just want, so back to what you were saying, right? What I would do, I'm assuming that there'd be mitigation there. I would technically, I would write up a mitigation estimate first, right? So like remove everything, wet drywall, bag for disposal, remove insulation, all that stuff I mentioned. So think of it in terms of that R&R &R on an estimate that you're typically used to seeing. Let's draw an invisible line down the middle of the R and the R, okay? Or the detach and the reset, if you will. So in other words, everything that's getting removed, everything that's getting detached, also anything that's getting cleaned, take them and put them on its own estimate, all by itself. I call that the mitigation estimate, the demo estimate, if you will, right? And think about it in more terms we're familiar with, right? Well, that's the mitigation estimate. All by itself, I would submit it and get it approved. And then I would say, are you ready for the content estimate? Oh, contents, you have a con, yeah, I've got, we got, we, what do you want us to do with this stuff? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, send it over to us. Then I send them the contents estimate and wait for it to get approved. <laughs> and then I send them the reconstruction estimate, right? So like, and that's the next, the third phase of the industry, which is the put back, the build back. And that's what we all here do, as far as I can tell. We live in the reconstruction business, right? And, and I just want to tap, help you to tap in though, to the mitigation 
into the contents side of things also. You, these guys got to see it firsthand yesterday because we went out to check out a deal and, the, and the, the homeowner told us right away, he's like, uh, yeah, we had this other problem. I got it on video. I, you know, he's filming. I got to watch this part. And uh, he, he's, it's so kind of funny watching it, you know. We'll have to watch that. I'll put it in a YouTube video or something. Yeah. But like, and the guy's like, he's like, uh, just want to let you guys know, I had another little situation. You know, uh, the plumber had to come out. There's a water leak in the wall. And the plumber had to come out and cut a hole and this and that. So, so I was like, well, did you file a claim for that? And he goes, yeah, I filed a claim. Have, has the insurance company already been out to inspect it? No, not yet, but I was wondering if you guys had any referrals that you could refer us to, somebody that could fix that, because it's Wayne's coding and it's this kind of thing, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, and I'm listening to what he's saying, right? I'm not making anything. I go, okay, I listen to everything. I go, well, I don't mean to be too forward, but, uh, you know, you're dealing with a full service insurance restoration general contractor right here, so you need us to refer you to who? You know, he's like, oh, okay, you can handle it. Yeah, show us the way. You know, but we went in and there was a hole in the wall and insulation was removed and the plumbing, you know, had been, that's a mitigation job right there, you know. The hardwood floor was damaged. That's going to have to be replaced. Um, all the walls painted, right? So mitigate, the only thing I would say, contents replacement, you didn't hear me touch on that because I don't really see that as being coming into play too much as what we're all doing. You know, if you're doing public adjusting, maybe sometimes I get those in the events. Those are those are cool too. But I think um, when it, the only thing I would really touch on with that is uh, something I will cover at, at some point a little later, um, which is I do want to see if there's hail damage and I'm doing my ex exterior inspection. I do want to see damage to to the contents also. I'm not going to bring that up with the adjuster, but I am going to take photos of everything, which I'm going to provide that file to the client, whether they hire me or not. That's like the feature of them having me out, right? Um, and included with that, if I find damage to their chairs and to their hot tub covers and to their barbecue grills and to those things, right? You guys saw me yesterday doing this, taking photos and seeing damage of the chairs. Um, then I want to give that to the client so that they could take that up directly with the adjuster, okay? I do want to do that, though because the, the adjuster is probably going to pay them actual cash value for all those items and they could use that money for the deductible if they wanted to. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's legal, ethical. I would do it right in front of the adjuster, you know what I mean? Um, and there's other ways to deal with that legally too, which we'll get into. Um, Quick question. Yeah, go for it. I was just going to open it up for questions. So like you were saying, uh, the mitigation. Yeah. Do you, if you get out there, you know, but the homeowner's done some cleanup or some removal or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever, have you been putting that into your mitigation? Because I do. Because I, I, you know, Xactimate has where you can go to the pricing and it'll have homeowner. Homeowner, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you could, you, you, you could do that and maybe to get around, you know, because like you're kind of getting into the PA territory there, right? But you could put it in there and document it, like as far as the hours of cleanup. Yeah. So and you could say 80 was done by us, 20 was done by the homeowner. You know what I mean? Separate by so Sure. Homeowner. With a footnote, right? Yeah. Because you're, you're being honest about it, yeah. To us getting out there, and then they have that, and then I say, okay, you can use that money towards the sure. or upgrades or whatever. debris removal, yeah. things like that. Because it's true, they're out there working on the stuff, and they the should water. be compensated for it. They should be absolutely. And knowing what I know now, if it happens to me in my house, I'm getting compensated. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm definitely getting compensated for everything that happens. Uh, Go for I had it. Had a adjuster one time also said, hey, yeah, you know, had a tree that fell down, he tore, he. Cut it up and took it away. He says, "You know what? I'll just give you four hundred dollars off the deductible right there." And he wrote it into the into the settlement. You know, so that, that kind of helps also. Sure, That's sure. Awesome. Yeah, because it's labor money that goes to them, right? Um, all right. Well, we, we got about ten minutes before we go to lunch, and so I'm going to start the next segment because it doesn't take me too long to get into. Uh, no, they haven't. So the plumber came out, found where the leak was. Mm -hmm. After they repair it, we pay for the repair. They'll then come and do an assessment to see wall, floor, and you know sure. all that needs yeah. to be remediated. We have wings coating on the on the bottom mm -hmm. there. I don't know anybody that 
could do work to take it off and protect it because the plumbers just come in he goes i'll just cut right through it Actually, you know you want to show that to you well yeah so i what i was hoping is that through all of your contacts and connections maybe you've got somebody that you would refer that we could use i've looked at a few people online you know but it's like we don't know anybody around here that does that so, so if you know something you trust to, to, to do the wainscoting well things? to pull the wainscoting off allow the plumber to come in to fix it because the wainscoting comes up halfway and then we have sheep off so we cut a hole in the sheet rock to look down and mm -hmm. see it's a brass fitting that evidently cracked. And so they may go back to the supplier, the insurance company, because that crap shouldn't happen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But anyway, so in order to fix it, he's got to cut through that wainscoting. I don't want to, I don't want to make the situation worse. I'm sure. looking for someone that can. So, I mean, I don't mean to be too forward, but you're dealing with a full service insurance restoration general contractor here. So yeah, we can Oh, full service? Yeah, yeah. We can do it oh, I didn't know that. I thought you were just, uh, on yeah. the working side. So well, uh, so I, that's our primary focus, but we have access. We can do it all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah. Yeah. You're speaking my language. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, so, as I told my wife, so she <laughs> sent me. We've got this group up here, so we're good to go. Okay. So, all right. so, good, here, good, good. so then, well, so then part of that then, while you're here, I'll show it to you after you, whenever sure. you want to. You can start with that if you want. We just do that. Because, uh, I can get the plumber in here to get the leak fixed. Sure. Sure. So, sure. Let's, let's, start, start, let's start there. there. Let's start there. And then we can, we can. Thank you.